If only it had a... My name is Kyle Rossell and I want to help you brew better coffee at home and today to do that I want to talk about espresso machines, specifically entry level espresso machines and this guy right here, the Breville Barista Express. Now this comes in around $700 which you might be asking Kyle, that's not entry level, that's pretty expensive but honestly within espresso definitely in that entry level range. Now we're going to talk more about other options and what this machine can do. I'm going to give you some pros and cons and then I'm going to tell you about how to brew better coffee on this, give you some tips and tricks. Now this machine was the first espresso machine that I ever owned. To be quite honest with you, it's near and dear to my heart. If you're watching this video and you own a Barista Express, there's something about this machine that is special. Is it the best machine since sliced bread? No, but this machine has something about it. Just a characteristic about this machine that really makes me smile. And I wanna do a comparison video between this and the Leap Bianca. So be sure to subscribe so you can see that. In the meantime, I wanna talk about this machine. Now, this machine is a great machine. If you're watching this video and you don't own an espresso machine yet, it's the holiday season right now, and this is a popular gift in this time of year. This might be my highest recommendation for an entry level espresso machine. Let me explain. This machine is easy to use, and that isn't the case with many other espresso machines. It has a single boiler design, but it's not a true single boiler. This is a thermal coil machine. What does that mean? Well, simply this machine doesn't have a kettle, a boiler to heat up water. It has a block that water runs through that heats up on the fly. Ultimately, what that means for you is this machine can heat up in a matter of seconds and brew espresso on demand. And for the average consumer, that's desirable and kind of cool. And so I get that. Not only that, it does have a built-in grinder with 40 millimeter burrs calibrated for entry-level espresso. Is this going to be the best grinder since sliced bread? No, but this will get you into espresso caliber grinds. Something like a Barazza Encore can't. So that being said, this is a great package if you wanna gift somebody a espresso machine or you want to receive an espresso machine and not wanna to have to invest too much into a grinder and a machine, this machine is awesome for that. Now, what I don't love about this machine is that it has a 54 millimeter portafilter. And this is the most unfortunate part for me because I've been talking to friends who still use this machine, people who are very into coffee. And this portafilter is what really separates this machine from being good to great. Because I think if this had a commercial size portafilter, more people would be satisfied with purchasing this machine and not upgrading. This portafilter is a 54 millimeter portafilter. Not many other espresso machines use this size of portafilter. And that's unfortunate. Because what that means is accessories, tampers, and quite honestly, brew recipes don't work the same with this machine. Now that being said, since I have purchased my Breville Barista Express, there have been some awesome companies that have been building some great accessories. In fact, I'm gonna be posting some accessories for this machine on my Instagram. If you don't yet follow me, hit me up. I'll link that down below. But it's just unfortunate that that wasn't a bigger port filter because for me, that was one of the biggest reasons why I left this machine and upgraded to a commercial machine. Now this is an appliance level machine. At $700, it's still a lot of money, but it still is an appliance entry level machine. It uses cheap plastics coated with stainless steel externals. It's not the most heavy duty machine ever built, but if you're getting into espresso, this is a great option. It was the machine that got me into espresso. I think if you're in the market to buy an entry level espresso machine, this might be the best option for you. It can do other things like steam milk. It can do things like brew grade espresso. It's got volumetric buttons that you can program. It comes with a porta filter. It's got both pressurized and non-pressurized baskets and a drip tray that lets you know when it's full. It's got a removable water tank and which I find very handy, a pressure gauge to let you know if your coffee is dialed in. So all in all, this is a great machine for the value. What other machines would this compare against? Well, I think this is a great machine to compare against something like the Gaja Classic. The Gaja Classic is a machine that has a 58 millimeter porta filter, and it is a machine that has commercial grade parts. But 
the thing that really separates the Gaja from this machine is its ease of use and convenience. The Breville Barista Express is the most convenient espresso machine to use on the market, period. And I am picky about my espresso. But there are definitely moments where I can hit a button and have an espresso within seconds. But is that the thing you should do? Well, we're gonna talk more about that in tips and tricks. But the Gaja Classic has a 58 millimeter portafilter, but it does not have a built-in grinder. Now, if you wanna go one step above the Barista Express and really have good espresso at home, something that you can have for years to come and really dial in in the long term, I would highly recommend checking out the Gaja Classic. The other option is if you already have a great grinder or you want a better grinder than the one built into the Breeze Express is the Breville Infuser. That machine is literally the exact same machine as this guy without a grinder built in. You can save about $100 to $150 and put that money towards a really good espresso grinder. But I wanna kinda of save that because I wanna get into some tips and tricks to help you dial in this machine because that's why you're watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button if any of that information resonated with you and let's dive into this. Tip number one for the Breville Barista Express is let it get hot. This machine can turn on and be ready within seconds, but that's not what you should do. I think you should wait at least 20 minutes before using this machine with the portafilter locked in to be able to get warm. You might ask why you would wanna do that. And it's simply because this machine, after a few seconds, isn't fully warm. If you want the best espresso possible with your Breville Barista Express, let it warm up. I promise you, you will make night and day difference espresso. Let it warm up, let it get hot. 20 minutes is the bare minimum. If you want to get up and have espresso ready in the morning, I would suggest two things, either Turn this on the first thing in the morning and then do some other stuff and come back and make an espresso or put a smart switch on this device. I will link some of those options down below for you, but let this machine get hot. It will be so much better and your coffee will thank you. When the espresso machine isn't fully warmed up, when the portafilter isn't fully warmed up, when water comes in contact with it, it will be chilled. Ultimately, under extracting your coffee and leaving a sour flavor. If you have sour coffee on the daily and you're wondering how to fix that, if you're not letting your machine warm up and you're using this machine, that would be my first suggestion to you. Number two, and real quick, because I'm gonna talk more about this at the end, is dial in your shot every single time. I have a full on video on tips and tricks on to dialing in espresso. I will link that up above. At the end of this video, we're gonna dial in this machine together. But you need to make sure every single coffee that you purchase is dialed in. Just because you have it dialed in for one coffee doesn't mean it's gonna be dialed in at the exact same settings for another coffee. Tip number three is to use a non-pressurized basket. Breville supplies you with four baskets with this machine. Two single shot and two double shot. You should always be using the double shot. Use the non-pressurized basket. The non-pressurized basket has more holes on the bottom. Ultimately what this is doing is it's not giving you fake crema, it's allowing the pressure in the puck to build up from the ground coffee, not from the lack of restriction within the actual basket itself. So always use a non-pressurized basket. This will help you get better results with your coffee. Number four is to use good water. I was talking to some people the other day about how much water changes your coffee. It's night and day difference with good water. Now, if you're using tap water, use something like a Brita or a filtration system like the Peak Water Filter to be able to give you the best tasting water. But if you really want to dial in coffee even more and get the best flavors possible, I would highly recommend using proper water for coffee. I have a recipe, it'll take you five to 10 minutes to make and it will give you tons of coffee water and it costs you just a few cents with some household ingredients. I'll link that up above. But if you wanna buy a product to make it easier for you, my biggest recommendation would be a product like Third Wave Water. Third Wave Water makes mineral supplements to be able to add to distilled water to create the perfect mixture of coffee water. Not only that, they have minerals within the coffee water to help protect your espresso machine. Number five, and this one's so simple, but you need to have good coffee. Your machine will only produce as good of a shot as the coffee you put in it. My first recommendation would be buy fresh coffee. I think the best results for your machine are from a local roaster who is roasting fresh often. Fresh coffee will make all the difference in helping you brew better coffee on the Breast Express. 
And number six and last but not least is keeping this machine clean. You need to be making sure you keep this machine clean weekly. I would highly recommend back flushing this once a month. Clean out your grinder if you've never done that. Like stop this video right now, grab your vacuum, take off the hopper and suck out all those old grounds. That right there will make all the difference in helping you make better coffee on the Barista Express. Number seven, and this one might sound pretentious but I promise you it's not, is to upgrade your grinder for this machine. If you wanna brew the best coffee possible on the Barista Express, this grinder will get you started, but it will not give you the best results possible. Now you might be saying that doesn't make any sense. It's built into the machine. Well, here's the deal. This machine has a great capability of making good espresso, but this grinder does not. With coffee and with espresso, the grinder is the most important piece of technology that you can invest into. A grinder makes all the difference. With my machine at home, I use a thousand dollar grinder because it makes all the difference. I would be better to use my Niche Zero and the Breville Barista Express than to use this grinder with my Lilith Bianca. It's that important to invest in a good grinder. Okay, so let's dial in this machine. I wanna help you guys figure out how to dial in the Barista Express. We're not gonna do this too long, but I'm going to take this machine and we're gonna brew some great coffee with it. Let's do that now. I've got some great freshly roasted coffee from Vancouver. So I'm gonna dial this in at the most coarse setting that there is possible to show you what a shot that doesn't look so great will look like. And then we're gonna back up and dial the shot in. Okay, so the first part of dialing in your coffee is weighing your dose. That's the most important part to start off here. Most people just hit the grind button and make sure that this is full. I would say the most consistent results are found when you're weighing your doses. So I'm gonna take a scale here, I'm going to zero out my port filter. And with this port filter, I'm looking between 15 to 17 grams, in my double shot basket. I'm gonna tap this down, make sure that the bed is nice and flat. We wanna make sure that the dispersion is even across the bed of coffee. Now with tamping, it's not about how hard you press, but how consistent you press. You really don't wanna to press too hard because you will probably not consistently press as hard. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to respond to those. The second thing I would recommend when dialing in your coffee is to use a scale to weigh the shot. Again, so you can measure every single variable within your coffee to make sure consistency is key. So now this machine, if you hold down one of the volumetric buttons, in this case, I'm gonna hold down the double shot. It will manually brew your coffee. Now, before I go any further, what you're looking for is about a two to one ratio. So I put 17 grams of coffee in here. So I'm looking for about 34 grams out within 25 to 30 seconds. This is just a guideline to dial in your espresso. Once you've gotten that down, you can then play with those recipes to see what the best flavors would be for your coffee. To have double your dry weight within 25 to 30 seconds is a great starting point to dialing in your coffee. Hopefully that helps. Oh yeah, that's much too fast. So that shot there was much too coarse, which I knew it would be because I dialed this all the way to as coarse as it can go. But this shot came out in about 19 seconds. And so if you're brewing shots that look like this, Stop it. You can brew better coffee. Let me help you with that. Okay, so let's try this again from the beginning. I'm gonna weigh out my dose. I'm gonna weigh out for 17 grams of coffee. So that time I went from a 16 grind down to a 13. Now that was a pretty vast change, but I knew that it was really coarse. So I jumped a couple numbers down. If your coffee is almost dialed in, it's only off by a few seconds or it's almost good, but it just needs a little touch. Just one grind size at a time. We're gonna do the exact same thing all over again. I'm gonna aim for 34 grams in 25 to 30 seconds. I've adjusted my grind down three notches. Let's see how it turns out. So even after dialing down the notch three times, it's still too fast by about four seconds. It's pulling about 21 seconds, which would lead to a very sour, unextracted shot. You can even tell just in the texture in the shot, it looks watery, it doesn't look like espresso, it looks like an Americano. It's not what I want, it's not what you want. We gotta dial this in even finer to pull a better shot. Let's do that. All right, shot number three. I brought this down to the 10 grind now. So I brought it down six notches on this grinder from the courses now down to 10. Start at 16, now at 10. Let's see what the shot does. Again, 17 grams in. I want 34 out in 25 to 30 seconds. Let's go. Now here you can even see I'm not even in the espresso range yet. And that says a lot. Still 
too coarse. So I started off way too coarse. Now this applies also if you started too fine. If your shot's taking way too long, you need to coarsen that up instead of fining it up. It's the exact same process, just backwards. Okay, so this time I brought it way down. It was not even in the espresso range. I knew that this grind was way too fine. And so I brought this down to a number four. All right, test number four. We're down at four grind size. Let's see if this helped at all. I haven't changed my tamp and I haven't changed my dose. Those are other variables that we can apply, but I always start with grind size and then adjust those when I have no other options. So let's try this and see what results. So I've gone too fine. I just pulled 34 grams in 36 seconds. I'm gonna taste this shot. Okay, so it's good. It's not a bad shot. It definitely qualifies as espresso now and not just watery guck. This is good, but it's bitter. It's slightly over extracted. And so I'm going to coarsen up my grind a couple notches down to a six, and then we'll try it at that. This one's looking much better. This pulled in 29 seconds, 34 grams. So just on the edge of what I would want, 29 seconds is still within that sweet range. And it tastes fantastic. This is a great shot. Now, before you go today, if you have any questions on the Breville Breeze Express, don't be afraid to leave them down in the comments below. I try to respond to every single comment. So be sure to ask anything you want to there. Again, my name is Kyle, and if you haven't yet, smash that subscribe because I'm gonna be doing some awesome reviews and comparisons and recipes in the near future because I just wanna help you brew better coffee. And hit that like button if you liked this video and it helped you out with this machine. In the meantime, continue to brew great coffee and continue to brew at home. Peace, we'll see you next time.